Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is August 5th of 2018. It's about 11.30 p.m. at night. And I uh, wanted to update you. I just discovered that uh, I went to the doctor on Friday and they drew blood. They said the lab results would be <coughs> available on Monday. I just checked and my... Uh, Lab results are available online. I'm going to show them to you here in a minute. Um, let me update you. I'm still uh, not 100% from my leg infection. The leg infection, well, the leg infection was a big thing. But uh, going in the hospital, being there for about six days, I told you that story you probably you know and having them put a catheter in me twice want to put it one in me a third time and wanting and watching the monitor all the time and wanting to chemically treat everything I left AMA I don't recommend doing that but I left AMA so I came home and since I left AMA, the hospital refused to give me any information at all. No paperwork. They wouldn't write down the medication that I was supposed to continue taking. The hospital has a great service. They have somebody who makes all your appointments for you. You know, because I had one actually uh, with the heart doctor that was had an appointment with his office, and he was in the building next door. But I was a patient in the hospital, so this very nice lady, she arranged for, you know, a new appointment and did all this. But since I left a few hours before I was supposed to in the morning, and since I left AMA, I don't, you know, I had to find out all this. Absolutely got nothing, no information. So I uh, came home and... Uh, had to find out what medicine they wanted me to continue taking and uh, stuff like that. But I worked with my doctor's office and, and got everything taken care of. Uh, in the hospital, when I went in the hospital, all my lab results, because I had lab results done just before that, all my lab results were within normal range. Everything was fine. As soon as I went in the hospital, Immediately, everything went to hell. Uh, all the lab results were bad. <laughs> so, uh, I think this is about the third time that I've had lab results done since I left the hospital. Uh, and the lab results are better. The kidney ones numbered, and they're that one is worrisome to everybody, but it's coming down. So I just saw the results a few minutes ago of those last lab results, and and uh, that's good. But uh, I think it was yesterday, or was it this morning? I cannot, can't remember, but I was in the kitchen, and uh, I've been kind of dizzy, lightheaded, all that kind of stuff, but I bent over to look in the refrigerator and my vision started. I haven't had that happen before. Getting dark from all sizes and, you know, from all sides. And I thought, I'm going to faint. And I got myself up and got back to my room and got into bed and laid there for a few minutes. And I thought, uh, what's my blood pressure? So I got up, came over and did the blood pressure. And, uh, It was 115 over 53. Then a few minutes later, did it was 119 over 60. And then a few minutes later, I did it 117 over 60. Uh, then, um, okay, then today, well, like 2 o'clock in the morning, 132 over 51. Then at 5.30 a.m. today, it was 108 over 53. 
An hour or so later, 123 over 61, then 111 over 56. You get the idea. Anyway, it's been slightly going up a little bit. Uh, but my heart rate has been, the numbers have been, it's come down a little bit, but the heart rate is okay. So I, I have a pacemaker in me, by the way. Wasn't too worried about that. So I'm... I'm thinking that uh, since I was like 240 or 245 when I went in the hospital and I'm now 221 pounds, I'm thinking that my blood pressure medicine may need to be adjusted. So I'm going to call the doctor's office tomorrow and see if that's... Now, those of you who you know, no blood pressure. These are not bad blood pressure rating. Well, sort of low. If I were a young person and an athlete or, you know, a jogger or what, those would be good numbers. But for an old man who's usually has a higher than what they really want, although my range is not real bad, taking the medicine, but uh, so I'll check tomorrow. But let's get to... Here, as you see, is my lab work from Friday, and today is Sunday. And uh, here's the one that is the kidney one. And it is, it's steadily come down. But I, I, since I've been out, I've had three tests. It was 2.3, then it was 2.0, and now it's 1.9, so it's coming down. And I want to get it down, hopefully below 1.3. And uh, everything else is within normal range again. And uh, so, now, let me just show you the other test, which is the same, you know, Taking the same, taking Friday also. You know, white blood count, red blood count. Uh, uh, everything looks pretty uh, looks pretty good. So uh, I should feel good about uh, feel good about this. But I'm still, uh, still have the taste problem. Food does not taste, my taste buds are messed up. My, I'm not sure exactly, I, I guess what the foods have would be uh, sweets. What would the three, I think there'd be three areas of food that make up, I'm guessing, and uh, Hillary, my daughter, has uh, two or three times got me a uh, strawberry shake or a strawberry malt. It tastes fantastic. But man cannot live by strawberry malts alone. Um, There are certain things, but I'm also, also I'm not able to, which is good, I guess. I'm not able to eat a lot. That's good. I mean, this is not the way to diet, to be sort of sick. Also, I can't tell if, I can't tell if I'm upset because of what I put in my stomach or if I'm upset because I don't have enough in my stomach. So... Uh, Just wanted to update you. So what else should we talk about here real quick? A little bit of, little bit of politics. So if you're not interested in politics and I don't blame you, bail out right here. I'm not sure. It's interesting to see they tried to get the president of uh, Venezuela, somebody did, with a drone. 
if you watch the video, it was interesting. He had all these security people, and they ran up with these uh, Velcor or not Velcor, Mylar. Well, anyway, with the protective. Let's see what happens here. With the protective covers to uh, protect him. Also, it's kind of interesting. His wife, you know, reaching out for somebody else. Everybody else still looks like they're in attention. This attack happened while Mr. Maduro was giving a speech on live television during a military ceremony. This is the picture that Venezuelans saw. You can see him and his wife react to the first explosion, and then you see this. Also, it seems like these troops, of course, I'm sure they were banned. I mean, it seems like the troops should There was a second explosion, and soldiers broke ranks and scattered. Video also remained in position around huh? President Maduro with shields and taking him off the stage. That's okay, when he's there, safety. Deploying Hours these. later, Mr. Well, Maduro addressed the nation again. The he revisited anyway. a conspiracy theory that he uses. That was kind of interesting. I'm drinking root beer, by the way. Uh, right now, because it has some taste that I can stand. Coke is something I want to get away from drinking because I used to drink a lot of it. But the uh, Coke taste has not come back as good as it should, but the root beer taste. Uh, uh, I tell you, this uh, pastor who introduced or who made the prayer or whatever. Oh my God. Uh, I'm not gonna you know, not gonna play the I got the audio turned off and whatever, but your presence into this building today. Uh, we thank that's, you that you gave us a president who has a vision to make America great again. Uh, Lord, I thank you that we have a president I can't understand these people who is bold back here. I mean, I'd get up and leave. I mean, and lion -hearted. God, of course, we I know that Trump, David, uh, when I think of our president, Lord David, these people act look like real people. <laughs> but Trump in the past has had people that he paid money to. to uh, you can kind of tell who they are by their David animation and the signs. They, they make sure they hold the signs and that kind of stuff. These people look like regular, thank you for a president who has a vision regular people. For the cause of making look like America church people. Great again. Probably Tonight members of this congregation or something. Our president and his family with a shield the of stuff faith. that this pastor said Lord, about... That shield of faith against the fiery darts I mean, you can be blood. for Lord, against Trump. That jungle journalism and my God, that don't, the truth you know, don't compare him to Jesus Christ day. or Gets Moses or... Lies and, mistruths and, and don't attack Lord, people who... Disagree, you know, don't those poisonous acts anyway. The lurk in the swamp of politics, Lord, uh, put your hedge of protection around our kind of interesting. It looks like the pastor keeps day. his eyes open, like maybe he can't. I can't actually look out there and let people, you know, I don't know. And here, I guess, people of the uh, book putting their hands on Trump. There was a the picture showed people. I don't think I'd put my hands, hands on Trump president as they were praying. And I think there was an inference or implication from that photo coverage that Not if I were they were religious. over it for yeah. him because of a political crisis. Maybe Could you explain a little put bit my more hand, about how the put my little hands on him and, uh, what, and what then the wash my hands afterwards? Um, the idea that somebody would only pray when they're in crisis. Poor Sarah think, Huckabee. Uh, makes you miss the I'll tell you, though, point she, of what prayer is about. You should do that every day, and that's, uh, I think you can do that in. It's amazing that she's able to try to uh, defend him. She does a good job of, uh, it's just amazing, I mean, because Trump lies every day. Trump is stupid. Trump, in my opinion, is seriously mentally ill. Uh, I sort of worked for a guy like, like him. I had a director of security that I worked for at a hospital. And he was intelligent, which Trump isn't. But he also lied. But of course, he didn't have the opportunity. He wasn't president of the United States, but he, he lied. I couldn't understand why he would lie about the things that he lied about. And uh, anyway, he had a number of faults, but I sort of liked him. 
and uh, he was also very racist. I had major disputes with him over racism and did grievances that I that I won for grievances and everything else, but I still liked him and I don't know why. Well, one, I knew that he was, uh, he didn't know who his mother, he was an orphan or something. He didn't know who his mother and father were and he had tried to find out and couldn't find out. I mean, he, want, he wanted to know who his real birth parents were. Also, he'd been in the military and I, I know that, you know, he didn't have a lot when he was, even though he was an officer, he didn't have a lot when he was in the military, and now he had a lot, but man, he bragged about it. And, but uh, it was hard to understand him, and uh, but I could see if if he had been president of the United States, uh, he would have been different because uh, you know in the position he was in I could do grievances and win them against him and I had you know the director of human resources which was on my side because everything that I did when I did grievances were things that were common sense and I knew I, I wouldn't do a grievance if I didn't know I was going to win and also when I did a grievance, well not just when I did other things too, if, if I was pushed or whatever, then I, when I entered, when I responded back, I always went the next step just to, you know, say, okay, if we're going to screw around with this, then my government, and I would step it up to the next level and, and I would win. If, uh, if it had been President of the United States, I'd have probably ended up in Guantanamo. Um, the way he lied, if I can remember, been a while, it was back in the 70s. I think the first one was um, that I know of. Well, he probably lied a lot, but the first one that impacted me or whatever. Um, I was a day shift supervisor. That didn't really matter. I would done agreements anyway, but uh, we had taken over doing snow removal for the hospital also. But anyway, he, um, one of the, the midnight shift supervisor really didn't think we should be doing snow removal. I don't know whether he was not showing up. I don't know what, the, I don't, you know. But the director of security posted a thing in the security office, written in red, of course, that uh, anybody who misses a day's work for illness has to have a doctor's excuse. And I saw that. I stepped out in the hall and just happened around in the director and I said, Mr. Ross, this, you know, you, uh, you can't do this. This goes against hospital. He says, oh, Jim, it doesn't apply to you. You know, it doesn't apply to you at all. It's, uh, so-and-so, the supervisor around the midnight, he won't show up for snow removal. And I said, well, Mr. Ross, and what you need to do is you need to call him into the office. You need to talk to him and explain that you've noticed this pattern of absences or whatever and tell him that because of that, he will have to have a doctor's excuse. But you can't do it to the entire department. And then he says, I can do anything I want to. I run this department. This is my department. If you don't want it, if you don't like it, you can get get the hell out of here or whatever. And I said, no, I don't have to get the hell out of here. You're going to have to change the policy. I will not. And he went storming off. And I found out later, uh, a long time later, that he went right down to the Human Resources Department and to the director, Mr. Vernon Johnson, and said that he had posted this policy of course, Mr. Vernon Johnson said, uh, and I goes again, and he says, but Jim Howard, you know, is the offender. Jim Howard is uh, the major offender. He's the one. And, of course, later when I, in fact, it might have been a year or two later when I went to Human Resources, says, I would like to see my personnel file. And they said, well, you know, we'll have to sit with you. And I said, that's fine. I just want to look at it. I looked at it, and then that's when I found out that 
Mr. R the director of security had gone down, said Jim Howard is the offender on this absenteeism or whatever. Mr. Vernon uh, Johnson used to be a railroad engineer, you know. Not a railroad engineer with a slide rule, I guess, but the railroad engineer goes ding, ding, you know, or whatever. And he was really a fantastic guy, by the way. But but absenteeism, tardiness, or that was, and he would tell everybody, new employees or whatever. I used to be a railroad, you know, engineer, and I had to get to the train, you know. I'd leave a day early. I don't, I'm exaggerating, you know, but, you know, because, and so that was his thing. So anyway, he, in this report, he pulled up my thing and he put in the report, you know, that, you know, Mr. Ross said that Jim Howard was the offender and Mr. Howard, you know, Jim Howard has an exemplary, an excellent record. He never misses work. He's never late for work. He never takes six, you know. So that, that was, you know, telling that lie and then thinking too that he could get away with, you know, I don't, you know, uh, that was number one. And uh, by the way, when I did, when I went for my request to see my personnel file, I wondered if other things had gone into my file. Now, the director of security, I know when I did my third grievance or whatever, that the assistant administrator of the hospital who was over security uh, had told me in person, you know, Jim, I'm going to take care of this and blah, 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 you know, whatever. And he said, I want you to know there will be no retaliation allowed against you and I'll let Mr. Ross know that there's been, you know. And then I found out later on that uh, Mr. Ross had a secret file on me and was putting things in there about me that he never put anything in about anybody else. He never had any secret files on anybody else and whatever. I didn't even go to the assistant administrator about that. But uh, anyway, I wondered then what might go into my personnel file that was down in, you know, the personnel department, the important one. And I was really admired Trinity Lutheran Hospital and Mr. Vernon Johnson, the director of human resources, because the only, there wasn't anything in that file that I didn't know about, you know, merit reviews that I had received, uh, commendations, all that type of stuff. The only thing that was in the file that I did not know about was every time I did a grievance, the first step was, well, the first step was, well, in my case, since I did a walk, it was, you know, the uh, director, going to my director of security. The next step was the Mr. Vernon Johnson, the Director of Human Resources, and he did a report, and that I had never seen, and each one of them, you know, substantiated what I said and supported what I said. So that really impressed me. Anyway, I guess this is long enough. Uh, I've got to figure out these two blood pressure medications, which are also heart medications. Should I take, I'm going to call, tomorrow I'm going to call my doctor's office and say, hey, do I need to change my, do you need to go with a different strength on that? I think it'd be safe to say, think I'm, because I want to go to bed too. I uh, think it's going to be safe to take these and then just call tomorrow. Anyway, thank you for watching and uh, I don't know, do a thumbs up. Make a comment. Doesn't matter if you do a comment. Doesn't matter if you do a thumbs up. Doesn't matter. If, unless you have a comment that's... Uh, so, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for watching.